Hello and welcome to this episode of Off the Press on this Wednesday morning, where we'll take a look at national dailies and make sense of it. And with me to do so this morning is uh, Bolahon Olojede. Good to have you. Good morning. Nice to be here. Good morning. And uh, we have several papers, but we'll begin with The Nation newspaper, which I believe will be displayed very soon. And the big story for The Nation is 2023 succession talks now unnecessary, says Tinubu. Uh, that's on the front page. Buhari has the character to refuse third term in uh, third term in office, according to Tinubu there. And then court stops planned electricity tariff hike, all on the front page, but continued on page seven. And president to INEC elections must reflect the people's wish. That's also on the front page, but it's continued on page seven. And on the top, before it is displayed, probe uh, stops reburial of Lasso students meets disappointed. That story is on page six. How do you stop the reburial of? Uh, okay, so find out details of that story on page six. And police restrict parents as medics give blood to baby on page thirty-nine. Uh, Quara says action on Saraki's land. And president urges truce. That's on page ten. Yeah, already displayed there for you to see on your screen. There's so many stories this morning. Where do we begin? Uh, anyway, uh, twenty twenty-three succession talk. Unnecessary. Unnecessary. Um, if you observe, there have been a lot of talk about 2023. Mm -hmm. I, I Already. Can't, I can't remember any election that took off this early before. Mm -hmm. We are so proactive. This almost. is not proactivity. This is distraction, <laughs> if you ask me. We just finished an election not quite seven or eight months ago. The, the new administration was sworn in. And we're already talking of an election in 2023. In three years' time. It's unbelievable. So it looks like we're not in the moment. We are in the we're future. We're not in the moment. And in the moment is where you impact people's lives. Yeah. So for maybe for people who have ambition, even for people who have ambition, I think at this point in time, engaging with the people will be more appropriate. Doing things, let them see you impact the environment where you are. Mm -hmm. It's better than talking about who is a candidate, who will contest, who will not contest, which is what we have been seeing. In the, on, the, on, on the scene. Yeah. Incidentally, Tinobu's comment is not going to um, douse that. It doesn't mean it will now stop because that's the way he feels. He, he's not about to stop it. Mm. So from north to the south, to the southeast, it's all been about 2023. It's quite distractive, honestly. And I just hope that the president will keep it focused as far as he is concerned. Mm -hmm. He has been making comments too, but not from the political side of things, but from a reform, the electoral reform. Uh, side of things. Mm. Mm. Could it be that you know there are indications? You know the way African leaders would like to want to stay in power. You know, once it's time, uh, people want to change the constitution, tweak it. Uh, maybe they just want to allay our fears. I'm just saying that maybe that's why there's a lot of this conversation. <clears throat> but like you said, it's important to be in the moment. So. Yes. <laughs> well, at least in my opinion of the president, there's no third term. Mm -hmm. He has the character. In fact, they say he has yes. the character to refuse, even yes. if the temptation there is, is there. there. Or if there are people, because mm -hmm. sometimes some of those decisions are impressed upon the people by people who stand to benefit by mm. having him in that position. Mm -hmm. You know, I think he has that strength of character to say no, um, no, no, no third term. You get a new person instead. Yeah. Okay, so away from that story. Um, I can also take that uh, INEC thing in, in the same line. Mm -hmm. um, when when I listen to what they were saying at that event, it seems to see the focus still is still on uh, providing adequate security, um, preventing election violence and all of that. Very important part to this thing because without security, you cannot conduct election. But when, when we look at very successful uh, electoral environment in other climes, you can, the security is there, mm. but it's also not there. Not that you're seeing policemen or whatever carrying guns and, you know, staying around. People are going to work and they're branching at a, 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 a polling booth and they vote and they move on and see Nothing a normal right. life, you know. So we need to start thinking in that direction. What, how did people get to that position? Mm -hmm. where it is not a war and we don't have to deploy 20,000 policemen to go and man an election. There must be something those crimes have done, right? Can we look at it and replicate it? And make it, it seamless. That? You know, um, of course the role of electronic voting um, is, is, will, will come to play. 
you know, where people can feel safer and they can do things. Mm -hmm. um, where even the diaspora people will be able to vote and their votes will count. Okay. Uh, so th these are some of the things we need to start looking at. Fixing the electoral law. Um, we, we were not able to do that before the 2019 elections. This is another opportunity and to do it and do it early enough so that we can even test it with the off-cycle elections that are coming up. All right, so just when, while you were talking about uh, seamless uh, voting process, I don't know if you saw the meme at some point, you know, when, during the UK election, and somebody said, no, this can't be election. There are no gunshots, <laughs> no ballot box taking. No, that's not that's, election. That's exactly what we're saying. I mean, <laughs> people are going their business. You, know, you don't no. even have to shut down the no, economy that's because not. an election is going on. You know. So <laughs> we hope to get to that point in this nation. Anyways, Hopefully. Where we'll be able to do that. All right. Right, okay, so um, there's the planned electricity tariff hike, of course, it's, there's a word on that. Uh, mm. Hopefully, people would get um, value for what they're paying for. Now, let's talk about this Quara stays on uh, action on Saraki's land. There's been that conversation, you know. Uh, it, it, there are two sides to that story, in my opinion. As always. And I'm not looking at it from Saraki or the current governor's side. I'm talking about the political side of things and the people side of things, the right thing side of things. Mm. You know, uh, from a political side of things, you may have okay, power has changed hand, and there are you know, somebody is trying to assert himself or mm -hmm. to get back at the other. That is the political side of things, and for me, it's not as important as in the doing the right thing side of things. What I mean by doing the right thing is there are two sides to this coin. It could be that the Sarakis own the land, mm -hmm. right? So the government has no right to take over the land owned by the Sarakis. So how do you establish land ownership? Documentation. So if government comes to my land now and says we want to take it over, what do I do? I carry my documentation and I go to the court. So these are the documents. I have my CFO, I have my uh, conveyance, whatever title document I have presented. So it's an open and shut case. Every day, land matters are being resolved. Mm. And it didn't have to get to the pages of the newspaper. So I think even the newspaper need to blank out this, this thing, honestly. Let the politicians deal with them. But the right thing is whoever has the land, if it is the government, let the government take ownership of its own land. If it is the Sarakis, let them go to the court and assert their rights that they own the land. That is, that, that is the right thing mm -hmm. to do. And the people's side, I was waiting for the, the people's side of uh, it. You see, the people's side thing is that you, you, you can, in the course of the political side, you can drag the people into it. Mm -hmm. So we've started seeing things like um, the old women saying they will still gather on that land mm -hmm. because th that is where they normally give them the handout. Um, that is dragging the people into the matter, and it will, it will start dividing the, the, the city or, or the town into two different political camps. Mm. Meanwhile, for the benefits of the people, these distractions are unnecessary. What is important to them is governance. Right. So we can take these things off the pages, let land matter be sorted at the court. It's a matter of document mm -hmm. and, and avoid all the distractions. And let them get yeah. the right leadership. Okay, so um, in the interest of time, we might have to take another story, yeah. uh, another newspaper, and that will be The Punch. And for The Punch newspaper, recapitalization, six insurance companies set to merge, and that's on page 26, 28, rather. And then Tinubu, again, it's too early to decide 2023 presidential zoning, mm. according to him on page 18. Lagos and Rivers headquarters of money laundering alleges smuggle. Really? We live in Lagos. And that's on page 9. Uh, Mane Oshola win Africa's Best Players Award on page 45. Something, something to smile about there in the sports news. And then the big story, PDP-APC clash as 30 die in Borno Bridge explosion. That story is on page two, as already displayed there, right on the top. Uh, APC responsible for rising blood bloodletting, according to opposition party, and PDP has nightmares, peddling falsehoods, says APC, banters of words there. And then uh, DHQ to probe extortion by soldiers, uh, Zulum Hills action on page 17. Buhari orders minister.
minister to reverse REA bus suspension on page 28. And that's some good news there. And there's a picture, sorry, uh, if they scroll up. Yeah, that's it. Thank you very much. Uh, 78 medical officers separate co joint twins in 12 hour operation. You recall that story. That's some good news there. And the st whole story is on page 29. Uh, look at them looking all good. Oh, yeah, looking, looking cute. <laughs> yes, looking cute. And they're quite identical. And this happened in Nigeria. Yes, and it happened in Nigeria. Yes. So we have 78 <laughs> good, you know, medical officers. So maybe people don't need to travel abroad indeed. Just maybe. You will be surprised <laughs> at the competence that still exists yeah. in this system. Uh, if the right environment uh, mm -hmm. provided for people. Uh, in, in the private part of healthcare, yes. you see you have some of this. Uh, but we now need to show up things on the public side of mm -hmm. yeah. All right, uh, we'll continue that conversation. Uh, let me just finish. So, 18 paraded for disrupt disrupting Ocean Crossover Party. That's on page four, uh, still on the Punch newspaper. Uh, my brother stabbed our father to death. Uh, that's that's a nice horrific story. story, but it's on page five, according to the witness. Uh, PDP governors fought alleged Umahi's defection to APC, and that's on page 19. Anti-Boko Haram troops alleged neglect threatened to back out on page 11 of the Punch newspaper, and then government ordered suspension of undergraduates' burial, according to the family. That story is on pages four and five of the Punch newspaper. And lastly, Lagos plans tax expansion to fund 1.17 trillion Naira budgets on page 25. It's a whole lot. Mm -hmm. um, well, the the good story is the 78 yes. medical officer yes, that separated, yes, separated the co-joint twins. Um, I found that quite exciting. I Things are still so. happening despite the limitations we mm -hmm. have in this country. And we can step above those limitations and begin to do a lot more. That's, mm -hmm. that's the message for me. Um, on the insecurity side of things, after the elections and maybe some trib tribunal affair and swearing in, it appeared that the heated first half hmm. of 2019 gave way to a better second half, where somehow the headsman problem was doused. Um, towards the end of last year, nobody, it was as if they all totally disappeared. I'm just tempted to say that's not a very popular opinion, but just yeah. go ahead. <laughs> um, the headsman kidnap mm. also subsided. It wasn't the, the 150 people killed that we had in January in Bermuda. It wasn't anything like that in, towards the end of the year. But somehow, it is picking up in January. Mm. And I found that very curious. Um, Whatever is going on, because at the end of the day, any time I see this uh, 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 casualty figures and the place where those events happen, mm. think about those mud-touched houses. They are the poor of the poor that are always bearing the brunt of all this, or at least most of all these attacks. Most of them don't even know what the issue is all about. Mm. So we, we owe it a duty to these people as, as a country, as a government, to ensure that that constitutional right, that duty to protect the people, that the government lead up to it is, mm. is very important. It's very sad. At the end of the day, you might find out that some of these things are political. The actors themselves are way above all this attack, mm. the people bearing the brunt are innocent people living in just century eco living. Sadly, and just like you said, they may not even understand what, what are they fighting on. about. They don't even have a clue. Mm. But they bear the brunt all the same. So uh, we'll just keep calling on the government to look at, even, even if there are situations in which some aggrieved parties have to be discussed with so that this can stop. Mm. You know, that, that, those, those, those are my thoughts about this insecurity. It is becoming, if you look at since January 2nd, mm -hmm. there has been one thing in Niger State, one thing in, it's been like this. I, I mean, Kogi rather. Yeah, I hope you we know. don't set the pace. The, so we don't yeah. want it to be like, this is how it was at the beginning of 2019. Mm -hmm. And it stepped up and stepped up until finally towards the end, everything, you know, um, uh, tend to calm down. All right, okay. So, um, which other story? Do you want to talk uh, about here? 
uh, Rivers. They say we are living uh, headquarters. Lagos is the headquarters of money laundry. That's according to Magu. Uh, but where is the money? That's another thing you need to talk about. So just maybe. The, the, the financial services capital or the commercial capital as well of Nigeria remain in Lagos. Mm -hmm. So it is not out of place that where you have 90% of the bank headquarters, where you have the financial services industry, where you have a huge economy, where you have 20 million people living, we also and be counting, where 20 million and counting. And counting we will also be disposed to um, vices as well. You know, mm -hmm. <laughs> that's the truth. Yeah. And when you look at the other state that was mentioned, it's, it's more or less an unspoken capital of the oil world of mm. Nigeria. You know, you mentioned the other oil, oil states. Uh, they are somehow, there. Somehow. Uh, we <laughs> just know state. that Rivers is a place. Mm -hmm. yeah, so. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> After struggling, not to name me anyway, you named it. Uh, okay, so uh, did you, I'm sure you saw the story of uh, Zolom, the governor of Borno State, and the, the exploitation. Uh, yes, by, the by, soldiers. by soldiers. Yes, by soldiers. It's, 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 um, it's a clearly expected situation. Which was why we okay. made a lot of noise then when they were saying people will start producing, providing their ID uh, national ID card. We said it will not work because the environment for everybody to be able to conveniently get that card has not been provided. Mm -hmm. If you don't provide it, you throw people out there and they start stopping them and asking for a card. At what point will 1,000 naira be equivalent to an ID card? Mm. That was what was playing out in, in uh, what yeah, the governor say, saw. Mm. It is very easy to predict that that is what will happen. And thankfully, they are going to provoke those soldiers. So let's see. It will be nice to see, at least maybe caution them so that uh, and correct whatever is, is going on out there. All right. Um, the same stories. Um, please find out the details of this others, especially this one of brother stabbing uh, father. Please uh, grab a copy of the Punch newspaper and find out for yourself what it is. Before we come to the sports news, we'll take the Vanguard newspaper. Uh, presidency and the Christian Association of Nigeria tango over rising insecurity. Yeah. The federal government treating criminals with kid gloves. That's according to Khan. Uh, than the Christian Association of Nigeria. We won't tolerate religious rascality, the federal government replies. Anyways, bloodbath in Borno as Boko Haram blast kills 30 yet again. And then on the top, it's vendetta against our family. Bemi uh, Saraki saying on page 44, Edo Assembly crisis court stops planned by election to fill 14 seats declared vacant. That's on page 17 of the Vanguard newspaper and Lagos to fund deficit with 97.5 billion naira borrowing. That's also on page 19. Nigeria's power sector records 14 billion naira loss in one week. Uh, please find out details of that and also on page 19 of the Vanguard newspaper. And then we have something there for Sports African Player of the Year Award. Senegal uh, winger Sadio Mane carries the Player of the Year Award as he's escorted off state by Ahmed Ahmed. There's a picture story to that and I'm sure uh, sports fans are excited. I don't know mm. that you're a sports yeah, yes. fan. Sadio Mane deserved it. There was no, there was no doubt about that. Uh, I saw it was a well deserved. Um, uh, award. award. I saw somebody saying, "Yes, you deserve it." It wasn't difficult to tell. It wasn't. Difficult. <laughs> there are some clear. It was. It was like the year when uh, uh, Judge Ware was the world best player. Mm. It was clear to see that it was. Everybody be agreed. There was okay. no point. There was no debate. <laughs> All right. So congratulations <laughs> to him then, since it's a unanimous uh, um, award. Okay. So 78 experts separate co-joined uh, sisters after 13 hour surgery in Abuja. Yes, in Abuja. this confirms that indeed it's, it's in Nigeria. Nigeria. <laughs> <laughs> we are happy about that. And 2023 is too early to decide on zoning of presidency, according to Tinubu there on page 42. And Buhari overrules power minister on Ogumbi's suspension on page 10 of the Vanguard newspaper. And that's about it, really, on the Vanguard newspaper. Any thoughts very quickly? Uh, Buhari overrules power minister mm -hmm. on Ogumbi's suspension. Um, Ogumbi was suspended by the current power minister. And um, Ogumbi had gotten a job with the United Nations, mm -hmm. anyway. And, uh, you know, that could be an issue with the new job. So it was mm -hmm. um, a step in the right direction to say no reverse the suspension, mm -hmm. let her proceed uh, mm -hmm. on, on that job. Mm -hmm. But you see, I, I think we also have to be careful. Um, the minister, the, the press person who spoke on his behalf, 
you know, trying to paint a picture that Ogumbi was a cause of Nigeria not having power is a ridiculous and illogical uh, uh, allusion. Mm. Yeah, it, it, it doesn't ring true. You know, and he, he begins to give someone some worries as to whether the guy will be more political than facing the real job at mm. hand. An individual who is in charge of rural electrification could not have been the reason why there is no light in my house in Lagos. Mm -hmm. There's a disconnect yeah. somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, I think that's the only different story we've talked about. Uh, the rights here. Um, uh, Lagos to fund deficit. Yeah. Okay. So um, Lagos to fund deficit uh, with ninety-seven point five billion naira borrowing. I see you looking at your time. We can have a minute. <laughs> we okay. can have a minute on that. Uh, yeah, well, um, Lagos State still has the largest budget, apart from uh, the theatrics from Cross River. Sometimes mm -hmm. where you get some over one trillion budget as well. Um, it's just talking about the emphasis of Vanguard was on borrowing. But you mm. see, when you look at borrowing by Lagos, it's not exactly the same as borrowing by the federal government. Mm -hmm. There is capacity in Lagos. 97 billion borrowing by Lagos State is, is, is a drop. It has the capacity to even do much more because you can see the revenue. And from the revenue, you can see the capacity. Mm -hmm. to repay those facilities. So there's nothing no, nothing alarming about Lagos State taking on 97 billion. You okay. can pay it. They can In pay fact, it. <laughs> I like I, the confidence I, even with yes. which you said it. If you look at this particular year's uh, 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 budget, mm -hmm. they actually propose to be able to raise about 70-something billion every month from IGR, not even from the federal government. That's good so news. if that kind of a government is saying, I want to borrow 97, what is 97? We'll just be like, ah, we know it. that you can start it. <laughs> anyway, it's no need. <laughs> All right. I think that will be it on, on uh, the Vanguard, and this they just have 30 killed, 35 injured in fresh bomb uh, attack in Borno, which is again uh, talking about insecurity. Unfortunately, I'm afraid that's where we are going to wrap. And uh, thank you so very much, uh, it's good to be here. Mr. Olojide, for your analysis, of course, in depth and always bringing different and new sides to every story. Uh, we call it a wrap here on Off the Press. We'll do this again tomorrow, same time, here on Plus TV Africa. And I am Amaka Okoye saying have a great day ahead of you.